All right, so iMove is an amazing startup program. It's really hard to beat free something that comes with your computer software, but eventually you'll want to do more. And the question is, when is the right time to change or what is the reason to change? Today, we're gonna to go over nine reasons you'd want to switch from iMovie to Final Cut Pro. But there's one main, main thing, something that really changed the production value of my videos. I'm gonna tell you what that is later in the video and it'll probably be likely the reason that you'll want to switch as well. Let's get into it. All right, reason number one, you'd want to switch from iMovie to Final Cut Pro. It's actually just a natural progression. As I said, iMovie is great, but eventually you're going to want to do more. And also Final Cut Pro is going to be an easier transition from iMovie because iMovie was kind of based on Final Cut Pro. As an iMovie user, when it comes time for you to do more, Final Cut Pro just becomes a more natural progression of where you're heading anyway. Reason number two, multicam editing. Now I've done a video on how to shoot and edit multicam video in iMovie, but it is so, so much easier to do in Final Cut Pro to sync it up and everything and to actually cut in between everything that you want to do. And you're not dealing with a two camera limit like you are in iMovie because you can only stack two pieces of footage together in iMovie and it's so much easier and simpler, it's worth the upgrade just by itself. Reason number three is keyframing and animation. So keyframes are where you can tell the software to do a specific thing at a specific time and change. Here on YouTube, you see that a lot where people zoom in and then maybe zoom back out when people are vlogging just to have a point of emphasis in their shot. That's something you could do with keyframes where you could just set a scale to scale in and scale back out. Whatever you want to do there with keyframes, that's really hard to do in iMovie. And then once you start to watch a lot of tutorials and you start to get a lot better with your edits, keyframing and adding animation is going to be something that's really clutch and you just can't do that with a beginner software. By the way, before we get over to reason number four, if you're liking this video so far, please go ahead and drop it a like. It really does help content creators like myself create more on the platform and hit the subscribe button because there's a ton more of this other stuff coming. But anyway, let's get into reason number four, custom titles. In iMovie, you have the most basic of basic type of titles that you could use there. In Final Cut Pro, this is just a lot easier to do. You have a whole bunch of stock titles that are a lot better in the software itself. And then obviously you could buy a whole bunch of different custom titles if you wanted to, to put them into the software. It's so much easier to do. And again, for any type of video quality, it ups the level of your production there. Reason number five, custom aspect ratios. You could set different aspect ratios at the start of your project. And Final Cut Pro, you can even change it mid-project. So for instance, if you're watching this on a phone, I have my aspect ratio set to a slightly wider aspect ratio. It's a two to one ratio. Link up here on a video on how to do that in Final Cut Pro. But you can't set custom aspect ratios in iMovie. It's set by the first clip in the video there. There's not many things that you could do to work around it to get like a wider aspect ratio if you wanted to, depending on what you're shooting there. All right, reason number six, staying in the theme of custom things, custom frame rates is something that you could do in Final Cut Pro as well. iMovie doesn't give you that flexibility. It sets the frame rate based on the first clip in the timeline there, so you might not even realize what it is the first clip that you put in there. It just gets a whole lot more complicated. And I don't believe that you're able to just custom export what you want your end frame rate to be there. And again, once you start to get into client work or you start to pay attention to these things, if you specifically want a 24 frames per second look, which will look different from obviously 30, definitely from 60 or anything else there, you want to be able to be in control of that and have that look. All right, one of the most important things and the main reason why I ended up switching over from iMovie to Final Cut Pro was color grading. Now I've done a video on how to quote unquote color grade in iMovie, but that's not real color grading. It's actually closer to color correction. In Final Cut Pro, you just have a lot more things at your disposal in terms of things like color curves, color wheels, hue saturation curves, all of that stuff, and then even before that you even get good at actual color grading, you could use LUTs. So you could download people LUTs. There's nothing wrong with using LUTs. All of us start off using some kind of LUTs there. And this was the main reason I was working on a video and I was like, I really wanted to get that orange and teal look into this travel type looking video. And even though it was something just for ourselves with our family there, I really wanted to get the look and I started using LUTs and that was my main reason to jump from 
I move it to Final Cut Pro. All right, two more things here, custom effects, things like adding grain, film burn, custom transitions, all of that stuff there. I actually did a video on a company that actually gives so much value for just like $100, but you can't add that stuff into iMovie in any way. Anything that's there is just stock as it comes. You can't download and put custom effects into your software there that you want to use. And then last but not least is audio editing. So you can actually do all the regular edit audio editing that you would in a professional audio software. In Final Cut Pro, you have at your disposal EQs, compressors, limiters, all that stuff there that you could use to edit your sound. And we do know that sound is just as important as the way that your video looks. So you can actually edit the audio a lot better than you can. And then even when it comes to stacking sound effects, a lot easier to do in Final Cut Pro as well and a lot more robust. And Final Cut Pro does come with its own library of stuff there. So everything that I talked about here in this video played into my reason from switching from iMovie eventually over to Final Cut Pro. And again, it was a natural progression. I tried Premiere and it just didn't work as well. Something wasn't working. I jumped over to Final Cut Pro, got the trial and it worked immediately. For me though, like I said at the start of the video, what was the main thing? The main thing was color grading. I wanted my videos to look a certain way. I wanted to be able to use lots and then eventually learn how to color grade stuff on my own. And now actually when you're seeing this particular image here of just me talking, this is me still working on my particular custom look there. I probably have my own lots out sometime in the next few months here. So if this video helps you out in any way, shape or form, please go ahead and drop it a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. And there will be a link down below for you to get a free trial to Final Cut Pro if you want to give it a try. That's the best way to do it. Try it out, see if you like it. But I won't ramble on. The only other thing you need to know if you're still watching, not only are you the real MVP, watch some of my other Final Cut videos that I have such far, but stick around. I have a bunch more coming, but I'll catch you in the next video. Big up yourself. Peace.